Hello and good evening and welcome to yet another episode of Cryptid Ramblers. I am uh, your co-host this evening, Callum, from uh, rainy Basildon in Essex. And with me, thank goodness, as always, is uh, my counterpart and uh, co-host, Scott. Hello, how are we doing? Very well. How are you, man? Yeah, yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. A bit of a good. manic weekend, as I was talking yeah. about with you beforehand. Yeah, a bit and, of a long one. Yeah. Selling one car, buying another car. Going to the other tree. side of the country, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely a mad weekend and absolutely. a quick dash to get home, have some dinner, and then jump on the record with you. And then jump on here, yeah, absolutely, yeah, and, man. Um, and it's uh, you know, only is it a new episode, but uh, for those that are keeping count, this is uh, episode ten. So ten, man. Who would have? That's a milestone right there, isn't it, mate? Well, exactly. I don't think we've actually said it for a while, but I can't actually believe we've managed to get to 10 episodes. Um, well, I can't believe we've had the dedication to get to 10 episodes. And that. Really. Yeah. That, that's the and thing. That. The amount of and projects that. you and I have had over the years, and oh, we just exactly. kind of petered away and yeah. never did anything with it. Exactly. And this is the one that's really sort of, uh, I think, ignited both of our uh, you know, mm. sort of inspirations and motivations and whatever which you know is obviously telling in the fact that we're now sitting here at uh episode 10 um yeah. but you know as we both know you know and i certainly didn't when we started but the world of cryptids is uh one hell of a black hole um and i think we've firmly fallen down it so uh yeah oh definitely <laughs> yeah we are tumbling <laughs> yeah. down the rabbit hole <laughs> yes yeah, see, yeah. Feeling like down Alice. hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but no, as always, you know, thank you to, you know, you guys, the the listeners, for sticking with us and uh, coming along for the the journey. Because as much as we do enjoy doing it, you know, it is all about you know the listens, the plays, the interactions, and and whatever else. And yeah, you know, without it, there's a small part of us that I'm sure would feel, you know, somewhat disheartened, you know, sort of about it. So yeah, just. Um, thanks to everyone who's uh who stuck with us um yes, thank you very much and keeping that in mind uh those who did listen to uh episode nine on the uh fabled banshee uh will know that uh this episode um is going to be about fairies and yes, uh and the, the fey folk yeah um which is uh yeah which is as take as all as we always say is has taken us down a path that I certainly didn't um, expect mm. with certainly a lot of the origins, which obviously we're going to go over, um, you know, some of the stories, um, which includes some famous um, literature uh, and almost, and also some famous English legends um, that have a, mm. have a link quite, quite a strong link as well to uh, fairies. So we've got all that to, to come, which is, uh, which is exciting. Um, yeah. So uh, let's jump into it. Let's go, man. Let's go. Um, so, for those uh, for those who don't know, um, fairies or fae or fey folk uh, is a type of mythical being or legend uh, found in the folklore of multiple European cultures, including Celtic, uh, German, English, French, uh, and Slavic. And uh, I didn't know this, so this was for my benefit mm-hmm. as well. But uh, Slavics were a people who originated uh, mostly from Eastern Europe, Asia, Northern Europe, and even parts of the uh, Americas. And they were, um, they were pagan um, before mm. good old Christianity came and uh, beat it out of them, basically. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> beat them <laughs> into submission. It was more or less the, uh, the, the history on, on the internet, so that's not uh, me being anti-religion that was what that was what i found on most articles oh that was the wording was it that was pretty much the wording i mean i think i've <laughs> i've kind of diluted it a little bit for, for the sake of uh, listeners and whatever but yeah but that was more or less the gist of what a lot of the articles were were getting at um so again like you know what i think you found and certainly what we found with the with this uh, research and also the, the banshee episode is that there isn't any you know one story you know there isn't any one uh kind of you know myth or one person that's kind of heavily involved in an interaction or an encounter with with you know with fairies um it's you know there isn't a single origin 
but there's rather a collection of folklore tales and yeah. origins, like I say, from these from these uh, particular uh, European cultures. Now I know that there are obviously going to be fairies in you know vast parts of of the world, oh, but um, all over the place. Yeah, exactly. But it certainly seems like those those regions that I mentioned seem to be the kind of the OGs, if you like, for uh, <laughs> you know for where this kind of legend started. And I, and I think from from what I think we've both found. Um, that this one is actually kind of heavily English um, in its uh, yeah. origins and its and its grounding, which is um, which is quite nice because normally we've found ourselves uh, in good old West Virginia for a lot of the origins <laughs> yeah, right? through a lot of this stuff. So to actually be I mean, on I, turf is well, uh, I do have a story that does go stateside. So uh, that, that's maybe right. that's just right. maybe just maybe yeah. <laughs> He is hoping <laughs> it, it wouldn't feel right without uh, without going there. So uh, so yeah, um, but yeah. So yeah, like I say, there isn't a single origin, or whether it's just a collection of, of sort of fairy tales. Um, now, it, it depending on which one you kind of dive into and which one you want to believe, it, it takes on its own sort of connotation and mm. it's, its own kind of vibe, really. Um, you know, for example, the the Christian origins depict them as demons or uh, demented angels um which yeah. probably comes as no no surprise um or in the pagan belief system they're more like um a deity so something that's peaceful something to be worshipped and uh, uh, and that kind of thing but also they they can also be spirits of the dead and and represent and that was an those... interesting one for me that one yeah. to be honest that's, that's that the one that caught my one. eye, yeah, which is why I wanted to mention it, because mm. with the way that it was all kind of going when you first look into these origins, it was like, oh, really? That, that was the one that kind of jumped out, out of, um, you know, out of everything else. And I've, just to intersect there, I may have yeah, actually gone. found a story that may yeah. help with that theory as well. Right, okay. Mm. Well, that's what I, well, when we come on to it. an interesting the, one. When we come on to the stories bit, that would be good to um, yeah, good to hear that one because that, that, that I didn't find actually any any stories relating to oh, did, that side of it specifically. I did have to really look, and I, it was just yeah. like I stumbled across this one, and I was like, oh, there you go. Because I remember you mentioning about that being a possible origin yeah. when we spoke about it previously. Yeah, exactly. and I was like, right, yeah. I'm chucking that one in. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good that you, <laughs> it's good that you found one. Because I must admit, I did uh, struggle to find one specifically on that. Um, but another thing um, which is, I think, is going to lead us into future episodes, but um, something that I certainly didn't necessarily consider at the time um, is that the term fairy is also used to sometimes describe other legendary creatures that we, you know, that we all, that we all know. Um, for example, mm. gnomes and goblins are also yep. actually a type of fairy. Um now, this is the one I didn't uh, also didn't really sort of consider is that also uh, sprites um, mm. are also a, uh, a type of fairy. It's, it's, so certainly from what I've sort of found is that fairy is more of a collective term um, for a sort of group of cryptids or or creatures. Because, That's right. Yeah. Because in that because most people when they've got a particular image in their head as to what yeah. a fairy is, and it's usually yeah. like a like a couple of inches high at the very most. Mm you know butterfly wings or dragonfly exactly. wings. well yeah if you think of um, um tinkerbell. tinkerbell yeah yeah everyone thinks that's what people think of as, as fairies fair yeah fairy sort of princess or whatever but actually since doing this research i know we both have sort of found out that that she mm. would be more actually a pixie that's um, right yeah as opposed to uh as opposed to a fairy and they are believe it or not rather different in mm. uh and in it seems like they've actually got Tinkerbell, right, in regards to being a pixie as well. Like in terms the of the and yeah, temperament, size. Appearance. Yeah. So f for being a, a pixie, they've actually got it, yeah, as you say, bang on with, you know, the the, the sort of the butterfly wings, the the, the sort of the pretty demeanour, um, you know, the, the sort of the small stature, slender frame, all that kind of thing. Um, hell of a lot of sass. Hell of a lot of sass, which <laughs> d definitely does match the... Uh, the pixie was was actually um, f fairies were um, originally were believed to not have wings um, mm. when they were when they were first so supposedly spotted. That was one thing that wasn't part of the uh, descriptions. That seemed to come 
um, you know, sort of later on. But uh, we'll get onto that in, in a second. But uh, a couple of the other uh, creatures um, that uh, are also essentially a type of fairy uh, are water sprites or nymphs, as they're also uh, known, uh, elves, mermaids, mermen, uh, sirens, and obviously pixies that we've just uh, that we've just mentioned are some of the other. Um, sort of classification of, of creature or legend. There's hundreds more as well. But there's there? so many more. From various different many. regions. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, we, you know, we could be sitting here spending a whole episode going over each region's uh, mm. include, but they're, they're the, the sort of the more kind of generic, globally recognised sort of creature. And that also shows you the the um, the range in which what we're talking about when we refer to either fairies or fae folk in particular. Exactly, yeah. So, and they can range even in height as well, isn't it? They can oh, exactly, range from yeah. like maybe a couple of centimetres tall to human size. Six feet, yeah. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's, there's a whole different uh, sort of range. But that, yeah, that brings us on to their, their kind of description. And so typically uh, fairies are described uh, as humanoid creatures um, who are small in stature uh, with magical powers. Um, they are also typically beautiful or, or handsome, and their height, as you rightly mentioned, can range from that of a human uh, to as little as three inches. Um, mm. They uh, apparently this is the bit that I thought was quite quite dark um, is that they don't have souls. So when they die, oh. when they die, they just they just f- perish. They just they just cease to disintegrate exist. and. Cease, yeah, cease to exist, and and that's it. They just it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, they, they they don't they don't sort of go into a you know a di- <laughs> daily <start>. daily <laughs> stuff <laughs> in a cloud of glitter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a cloud of a puff of glitter. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Like, like an opening to a Liberace concert or something. <laughs> Well, they've been down at GAY for the night or something. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly, all, all that, yeah. Um, now, <laughs> now the, and again, obviously following that, you know, lack of souls thing, it, it took a further uh, sort of couple of dark turns um, in, in the sense that fairies have been known to carry off human infants and replace them with changelings. Um, mm. Now, again, this wasn't a term that I was particularly aware of, you know, prior to this uh research but changelings are usually deformed elves or fairies who are substituted for human children so basically the human children are abducted by uh, fairies and they're either offered up to the devil or they're kept to help strengthen the fairy stock i think i know a bit where the catholics and the christians got involved yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. I think I might be right. But yeah, yeah, that's um yeah, I mean we we spoke about the idea of changelings for the uh, black eyed children episode, didn't we? That it was uh, a possibility. In that. Yeah. In that because uh again that's the reason why we decided to go down the, the Fae folk route, really, because yeah, definitely we was finding that the Fae folk as a subject was coming up a lot. It was, um, yeah. And I've I think I did mention it at the end of the last episode when all the other podcasts and, and such that I listened to, which not connected to in yeah. any way, shape or form with regards to research and whatnot, mm. even for them, that a lot of stuff that was coming up for them was fey folk and exactly weird yeah. phenomena that surrounds the idea of fey folk as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. I yeah, don't know exactly. if it's like a new idea that's running at the moment. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's just something that's out there in the ether. I think it's one of those it's things really where it's, it's something that you're able to use to explain certain goings on or, you know, certain, you know, sort of phenomena. So, you know, instead of putting it down to something that's unidentified or trying to liken it to something else, people actually look seemingly going back through the archives and think, oh, actually, this sounds like it could be a yeah. folk or, you know, fairy or, you know, that type of, based that on type of thing. So, yeah, based, based on historic, such. yeah, historic texts and, legends and, and whatever else and yeah you rightly mentioned uh black eyed children and the, the whole thing with that was you know it's because they always carried a youthful you know experience mm. but but their their age range you know differed from you know as young as sort of a toddler i think it was right up to about 18 wasn't it um, uh yeah i think it was, it was 16 at the very 16, the very most right, okay. i think it was yeah, yeah. It was some, yeah i knew it was something around there from uh, from memory um 
and and yeah, so that's where it kind of, yeah, that's where that kind of, um, you know, that kind of started. So, but I thought that was uh, interesting. And yeah, as you say, another drawback to the previous episode, which is why we ended yeah. up going down, you know, this uh, this path. Um, the the interesting bit I found actually was that both human adults and children can be carried off uh, to the you know fairy realm, mm. um, and apparently if you happen to eat or drink what they offer you within that realm, you can't return to ours. So yeah. you almost offer yourself to the the fey folk, I guess. Yeah, um, and it's also accepting it's a, their offer. It's a it's a thing as well. Like the the time is very very different as well. Because there's, yes. um, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. They've explored it through um, like TV and culture and, and such like that. But even yeah. down to like various stories that people have had in the forest and stuff, when they have come across something, yeah, and then they've had missing time. So they think that only like five or ten minutes has passed, but actually, yeah. it might have been a couple of days. Yeah, that people they've been missing. They've just kind of wandered out of the wood. Yeah, and there was one one guy even had a beard. Like right. he just grew a beard over like a like half an hour in his was, mind, yeah. but he'd been gone for like four days and he just wandered out of the wood. Um, yeah, it's, uh, there's some really weird ones out there, but they, uh, we, we spoke about it when um, on Thursday, harking back to True Blood because they did yes, exactly they that, did that in True Blood. You know, yeah. uh, Suki goes Suki's into parent, the realm and it? finds some of her, her relatives that yeah. disappeared. Yeah. And they thought they'd only like, been there for a few minutes, but in fact, it had been like thirty plus years, hadn't it? Yeah, some, yeah, something yeah. silly like that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's that whole idea as well, isn't it? For the the whole accepting something or accepting an invitation of some sort. It's yes. like, um, and it's also like you're not supposed to give them anything either, because no, no. it's. It's a contract of some some yeah. sorts that we don't it's not a, necessarily an understand. It's a yeah, it's like an unspoken yeah. contract. So you don't offer anything, you know, in in return or as thanks. If they offer you their gift, which would be either food or drink, and you accept it, that is you agreeing to a contract, as you say, uh, without you knowing it. Um, and that's where you're then kept to, yeah, kept to that that realm. Um, and yeah, normally if it's an adult adult female, then they are normally abducted to essentially help reproduce and um, increase the, uh, the the fairy stock, which is where again a lot of the theory of a lot of these hybrids of uh, have come. Sounds from. very uh, sounds very uh, alien abduction ish, doesn't it? It does. It carries a lot of similar traits to the alien abductions. There's like the loss of time. You know the the experiments or the you know the the, the probing and, and that kind of thing. Loss of memories, screen of memories memory. as well. Yeah, yeah. The types it of is. aliens, the different types of you know creatures that are you know met. It's not just like little grey men. It's all different you know Various types and beings, sizes yeah. and even humanoids. So yeah, the whole hybrid thing certainly. Does I mean, we we could do like weight. a whole. A whole other podcast just on alien abductions. Oh, geez. Well, yeah, just... we, we haven't even got to that bit yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, t- yeah that's, that's tell good. me about it. I mean, to be honest, it's one of those things. That I know that. So, I'm going to digress a little bit here. I know that the, the United States government are at the moment releasing a lot, loads of... and loads of evidence of UFO stuff, or UAPs yeah. is what they, yeah. they're calling it now because they're trying to make it a little less mainstream. Yeah, but what they're not doing. What they're not dealing with is the phenomenon of alien abductions, and yeah. that is far more important yeah. than a picture of something up in the something sky. Something in the sky, yeah. There's something going on with like, alien abductions with these people. People are experiencing these things, and nothing's yeah. really being done about it. That's and they're not. That's the bit they're not talking about. Yeah. Yeah. They're Sorry to that... rant a little bit. I feel very strongly yeah. about it. Yeah, exactly, I can tell. <laughs> I'm going to start a yeah. Facebook group. I look... <laughs> Yes, yeah, I look forward to that uh, episode. That's for sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, so we'll st- obviously the, the and I think you found this as well, Scott. It's certainly with the stories that that you found. But um, out of the sort of European cultures, it was actually the English origins that seemed to carry mm-hmm. a lot more references, uh, origins, uh, stories. You know, as you found, yeah, um, I found more stories from England. Yeah, and so. Uh, yeah, so I thought it was worth kind of jumping in 
sort of jumping into to that really. Um, now, again, there isn't one account, one story. It's a, it's a collection of experiences um, that date. I think the earliest I found was the 13th century um, is the oldest known description of a fairy in England. Um, certainly from what uh, I, I could gotcha. uh, so I got I you by a century, a century. Or maybe about 10 years, actually. Ten, well, <laughs> I'll take 10 years. <laughs> well, the 13th yeah, century but, would be... Only, only just about still in the 12th century, mind you. Just, only just about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but, but again, you know, in England, you know, I will say England, it stretches into Scotland as well. So it's probably better to say that, you know, British origin. Um, yeah, the UK. But uh, again, going back to the, the various uh, other creatures, you know, we've got um, hobgoblins or, or brownies, who are both a type of uh, gnome um, who are, uh, they're sort of um, referenced as guardian fairies. So they are, you know, they're useful and, you know, we'll do things like protection, housework. Um, and th- these are also predominantly known to be found in, in England, but they also have a few mm sightings up in uh, Scotland and the, the thing that came to mind when I read about you know these guys was like um uh, Dobby the the house elf yeah from Harry Potter Dobby that, and that creature. Kind of, yeah, yeah exactly that, that that kind of thing you know in, in, in terms of what you know hobgoblin would you know would, would sort of be that, that that was the reference I went to anyway um yeah that makes sense of course you know as uh, banshees um have been discussed as being a possible uh, fairy or, or fae folk again because they're yeah. drawn we discuss, yeah we discussed the, we yeah, the origin it. of that didn't we yeah yes yeah. yeah, so i won't i won't obviously go into that but because of where they're they're drawn to natural locations like woodland streams locks that kind of thing yes and that's a very um prominent uh characteristic of fairies so again that's where people have made the the connection there um and, and again um goblins and uh, something called bugaboos, um, but they're quite malignant um, creatures, <laughs> as opposed to uh, yeah, little yeah, little shits yeah. basically. Yeah, um, sort of compared to some of the others. Um, now, I've got um, I've got quite a compelling story. I don't know if you had one you wanted to go into first, but um, mine's probably one of the. It's probably it's possibly the most well-known um, encounter yeah. or, or believed encounter um, with, uh, with fairies. Shall I jump into this one first? Yeah, crack yeah. on with that, maybe, yeah, because I think everyone will at least have come across uh, the pictures that are involved in I'd the imagine, story. Yeah, I'd imagine so. So this one, so again, we're in uh, England. It's uh, 1917, um, and it involves two young cousins by the names of Elsie Wright and uh, Francis Griffith, Griffiths um, in Cottingley, West Yorkshire. Um, and they were believed to have caught fairies on camera. Um, now, you can quite easily jump on Google and, and find them. Um, we'll share them on, on our socials, on the Instagram and the, the Facebook, for those that want to sort of have a look. Um, but basically, in the picture, it's uh, Elsie, who I believe is the youngest uh, cousin, uh, was captured playing with the uh, fairies down by a, a riverbank. Um, and it was, uh, it, it, I, like I say, we'll show the pictures, but it's basically one of uh, sort of LC uh, kind of in, in the background and in the foreground are four, I guess, dancing fairies. And they're kind yeah. of, pran- it looks like they're prancing across a, a kind of a moss covered log, which is sort of in the, in the foreground um and there's about there's five pictures in total all in different um kind of positions and you know sort of locations um and that's like they're also interacting with them as well actually interacting so i think there's there's Mm. one where it's it's kind of hovering just in front of a face i think on another one it seemingly looks like it's going to be landing on her hand because she's got a hand held out uh, i think is is one of them if i remember rightly um but uh the thing the thing for me was it these photos apparently were that convincing at the time that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who of course created uh, Sherlock Holmes, believed it to be concrete evidence of of this phenomena. Um, and you know, really, to be honest, did... when you look at 
when you look at the pictures, oh, yeah, you can understand yeah. why. Oh, absolutely. Like, even I looked at them well, and thought, cool, that's, that looks real. Like, you can't even <laughs> yeah. see one of the things like Photoshop, so you can't think, oh, yeah, that looks, no. like, that looks doctored or that looks like it's been, you know, messed about with or whatever. It looks like There's a no genuine... post-production editing or anything oh, like that. Yeah, no. exactly. There wouldn't have been anything, you know, sort of like that. So I could see why it would have captured the, you know, imaginations of people, um, you, know, at the, at, you know, at the time. Um, however... <laughs> Some, uh-huh. uh, yeah, some 63 years later, both girls claimed that they faked the images um, using cardboard cutouts from a popular children's book at the time. Interesting, I couldn't find what that particular book was, but I'm guessing it's going to be something about... Uh, about I mean, they held on to it for a long old time, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, they kept that with them for a while, yeah. Basically, they, like I say, there were five pictures that were taken in total. Now, the first four... Um, are the ones that they say were faked, um, mm. which is with Elsie uh, sort of interacting with them, playing with them and that kind of thing. But then there was a, f- a fifth picture that they uh, took that they were adamant is 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 real, that they didn't mm. fake, um, that it is, it is genuine. And that one does also show um, a, a, a fairy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, well- because we were looking at it before, weren't we? We did, and yeah, we were, yeah. There's, um, you can definitely see what um, what the two girls are calling their cutouts. There's one yes. of those in it, yeah, and that's off to the right of centre, and that's it's it. the centre of the picture that there is actually something there, mm. and I say actually something that you can see something there. Now I don't know, mm. I don't know if it's a bit of pareidolia in that you know we're just seeing what other people were telling us what you want to see sort of thing that. yeah but it does look like a small female form um dressed in robes um yeah now that's right. but it's not as prominent no. as the other one it's not as, as the clear actual, like no. the, the, let's call it the cutout one that's right yeah you know it's not as prominent it's not as clear it's almost like it is sort of um the same way that people do post-production images of ghosts, where they'll just take something yeah. and they'll just, just turn it a little it. bit transparent. Yeah. yeah, make it a bit you opaque know. and, yeah. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, you know, then then just chuck it on there, all done and dusted, yeah. right, print it off, send it off. That's a, that's a ghost. But obviously, they didn't have that sort of technology. No, they, they, they couldn't have They didn't that have that sort before. of way of editing. Yeah. Um, and if it was just the two young girls taking the pictures, would they known about things like, you know, camera trickery, you know, certain lighting effects, reflections, that kind of thing. I, you know, I'm not too sure. I mean, if they were, they were clever enough to create these photos, which they claim, you know, are fake, I believe it or not, and, and I'm not that sure that they were faked. I, I think they look too genuine myself, but, you know, we'll share them on the socials and we'll let, we'll let others... Oh. Uh, sort of take a look, but I, I don't know, unless I'm missing something to the, the story in terms of who else was involved or, you know, how they created it or whatever, I, you know, I'm yeah. not too sure. Maybe they said they were faked to, I don't know, take people off the scent or so their families weren't getting harassed. With, uh, with the claim, yeah, with a claim like that, then, yeah, people would be getting harassed. But then why did it, and... but if that was the case, why did they take 63 years to do it? You know, they would have done it sooner if that was the case. So, yeah, I, I don't know, but... Um, yeah. That's fair. That's a fair enough. But yeah, but but that was um, that was sort of my my takeaway, um, you know, takeaway from that. Um, so yeah, so, the, the, so that's the that, you know the, the story. Like I say, it, it doesn't. I guess it hasn't got much context without the photos. But we'll obviously we'll share those on the yeah. social. So if you're listening to this and you know want to jump on, we'll we'll share them over the, the sort of the coming days from the uh, you know from the release um, of the uh, of the episode, but. But no, I thought that was the, the. I mean, that's probably the most well known um, in, in in England. I would say mostly just for the the fact that they've got photo evidence, supposedly, mm. um, and also because someone like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle put his name to it um, and said that he believed them to be real as well, um, which I thought was quite yeah. compelling. Um, and that's that's the something as well that with regards to, um, but the. The idea of fairies yeah. and their, their origins. That yeah. it's that's something that we haven't been able to come across again. Is no solid pictures or Actual videos pictures. and stuff. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, and I don't know if it's something about the times now, but 
I find myself being a lot more cynical with regards to footage or mm. pictures and stuff. And I think it's partly is, I think mean, mostly it's down to the technology that's available now. Because, oh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm no way in any way, shape or form an expert with regards to photo editing or anything no. like that. But I believe that I could, Spoil with it. my limited Photoshop skills, yeah, be able to superimpose a fairy into like a bush or something like that. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Yeah, it's so it does make it quite difficult. And I suppose all we've really got to go off on is either first or second hand accounts on these things. Well, exactly. Yeah, it's either going to be yeah first hand accounts by the people that supposedly had the you know the encounter or people that were there to you know to kind of witness it or maybe even character reference you know some of these mm. stories have had character references where people knew the person that you know that was involved and would sort of you know swear by them and, and that kind of thing and, and that's really all we've got whereas this is the mm. the first possibly the only one that's actually got recorded you know evidence mm. of you know of well, this we happening. say we say all that we've got but there are literally thousands of accounts and I'm like far too many to mm. far too numerous to even. Oh no, no, I know that we've got to give them here by yeah. any chance. But yeah, but I like, mean, with the physical, some sort of physical evidence. Other oh than yeah, just, sorry, uh, yeah, very limited. Other on that than just an article or a story or whatever. Yeah, with actual evidence to to sort of support the the account. To back up and claim. What I meant, yeah, at yeah, the very least. yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I mean, that's that's pretty much what what I found as well with regards to. Mm lots of stories i did find two very different style of stories which i'll come on to later on but okay um i did find a lot of them they revolve around um basically in a nutshell little people dancing about being seen and fleeting away yeah you know i've um there was loads of them then they, they date from as early as the the 12th century going all the way up to present mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I, I want to talk about that one at the 12th century because I did find it really interesting. Now, okay. If, if I may. Yeah. Now, this okay. one's from uh, Dagworth in Suffolk. And okay. this was um, a time between uh, 1189 and 1199. So just just inside. Just in the cusp. Yeah. Just in inside. So <laughs> just picture by maybe a year. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, and it's uh, the house of Sir Osbernie de Bradwell. Okay. And I'm probably butchering that. It's so easy for you to say. Yeah. Yeah. And it's <laughs> um, it's a malakin, as they call it. A malakin. Okay. Um, again, I'm probably mispronouncing that, but um, a malakin would uh, converse with the family of uh, Sir Os- Osbernie and Dear Bradwell, sharing people's secrets and humor in householders with a voice of a one year old child. I mean, creepy. That's, that's creepy. That's creepy. Yeah. That's really <laughs> weird. Stuff about um, this. It wouldn't just be like the voice, but it would speak. It would speak in both English and Latin. That would be even creepier. I mean, a one-year-old voice speaking you in Latin. I'd be like, nope. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye. Yep. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, I'm out of here. I don't like that. So, <laughs> yeah. sounds, a, sounds a little bit too uh, too Italian for me, mate, that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Too bilingual for me. Get <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're a smart little bugger. He's got yes, two it. languages under his No one likes a smart ass. Get lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, while a Malikin could be heard and felt, yeah. he uh, only appeared once, oh, manifesting okay. as a child dressed in a white tunic to a woman who agreed not to try and touch him. Now, right. the Malikin himself claimed that he had been born, um, as, had been born a human, Right in Lavenham, yeah, Lavenham, and uh, removed from a field after being left there by his mother. Uh, okay, and that he had a hat that made him invisible. That sounds familiar. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? It's a very boy who didn't want to grow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it certainly does. It that's does what be. I found was yeah. really, really interesting. Was he was just left out in the field, which was often a practice. Yeah. Then for when someone couldn't afford to have another little one or mm. yeah, for various different reasons. Yeah. They would often leave a child in the field. Yeah. And be what it may. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I That's like that because 
it could also that story in particular could tie into what you were saying about them being a spirit of the dead as well yeah quite possibly yes it could be a a spirit hanging around from a you know a baby or young boy that that sort of died and yeah was serving out that sort of a purpose yeah or been picked up by the fey folk and folk yeah changed yeah absolutely so it could also be a change thing that's also what we would be considering a spirit of the dead yes but it's just that he exists in another realm now yeah absolutely yeah that does make yeah it makes perfect sense yeah i i found uh, i did find one a little bit closer to home to us oh wow chelmsford chelp blimey in chelmsford yeah then this one this one popped up in 1946 okay um and this comes down to um (laughs) <laughs> it's quite a funny little one, actually. And there are probably a few of these around Chelmsford as I speak now. Okay. So many have complained of being harassed by an unknown force while at, a, at this particular building. Now, it doesn't name what building that is. But the reports blame an ugly little dwarf said to haunt the area, and in particular, the churchyard. Now, this says it's, oh, tell a lie, it says it's Springfield Place. So oh, if okay. anyone in is in Chelmsford and, and you know, know Springfield, Springfield Place. Place and they know a churchyard, yeah, it's time to go hunting for an ugly little dwarf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. get exactly, those pictures yeah. for us. Get those pictures. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's mad. And uh, yeah, yeah. There's this, and that, again, that that goes down that same route as what you, what you was explaining about there being a very wide range of what is considered fae or fairy. Fair, or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's um, it's mad, but um, yeah, just I, I just kind of gone. Sorry. No, I was I, I was going to say um, I mean you even you even got a story from uh, one of our listeners, didn't you? That was telling me about. Ah oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, again, thank you to uh, to the, the listener for um, for writing in with uh, with this one, um, which is which is quite cool. Um, they they do want to. Um, remain uh, anonymous so uh so fair enough respect that yeah as you know as you can imagine with this type of thing um but it, it took place uh in their home and they were i think they're in their kitchen um if i remember rightly and they're in the process of basically leaving uh to you know obviously exit the kitchen into another room and it was like one of those moments where you sort of turn around and someone else is there, but you don't expect it. And so it was like, a, oh, bloody hell. And, you know, but directly in, in front of them, you know, sort of right in front of their face, um, were, were two fairies. Um, now, wow. they, they were uh, apparently six inches uh, tall. Um, they took a humanoid form in terms of its body and then and limbs, so arms and, and legs. Um, but its uh, their, their their facial features were more like um, a, a bug, like a bug like. So you know, bug. I, yeah, like a bug, like a, a sort of an insect. So from that, I'd say you know, sort of the big, you know, sort of big bulbous eyes, um, you know, sort of flat you know sort of flat nose and a you know sort of tiny little slit for a mouth um oh and that's, that's, a, that's a very interesting description isn't it it is right because that has actually yeah. popped up in in other accounts that i know we've both uh, read from various from various cultures so that seems to be quite um quite fitting to to other other descriptions um and so it, they were right in front of you know this this person's face and to me it kind of sounded like it was almost like an oz effect thing which i know you mentioned from uh james's mm. uh you know experience where all other you know sort of noise seemed to be sort of removed because all this person could could hear was the flapping of their wings like the, like the buzzing almost like like a, oh, wow yeah, like if you imagine it was like a I don't know, like if you have like a butterfly or, or something near your ear and you can hear that kind of, that flapping of, of wings. Um, or like a, almost like a, like a hummingbird, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I'd see exactly like that. Wow. Yeah, Exactly like that. I think they might might even have referenced that when they told me the story, actually. So, yes, yeah, so that's a good good. Well, it definitely up. couldn't have been hummingbirds. We yeah. don't have the... I'm guessing this person was in the UK. Uh, no, actually. 
no, oh, overseas. Oh, okay. Yeah, overseas. So yeah, oh. so yeah, so it, it, I don't know if it would have been, but no, I mean it wasn't. It, but, but but you made you was bang on with that kind of likeness with the gotcha. you know, with the sound because I think that's what they referenced as a as a point of reference to you know imagine what it what it sounded like, um, and so it was it, they they had that interaction where you know they were sort of looking at one another not expecting the other to sort of be there. So it was a bit like, oh, okay. And... <laughs> well, they were surprised as well. Or both. Is... Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. You know, the, the fairies weren't expecting anyone to be, you know, sort of in the house. And obviously the person in the house wasn't expecting to to see two bloody fairies. <laughs> you know, it's hilarious. You know, especially sort of right in front of, uh, you know, right in front of their face. So, um, yeah, so there was a moment of, um, yeah, sort of a moment of interaction um where yeah they're just sort of you know all looking at, at one another um and then the, the sort of the, the fairies turned and you know flew towards a, a wall which i believe on the other side led to a garage if i remember rightly uh, but they just okay. went but they just went through the wall as though it wasn't there just you know straight kind of passed straight you know straight through it um yeah now the person that sent that in said that the house was um, amongst quite a lot of uh, woodland, um, a lot of oh, okay. lot of dense um, dense sort of woodland, high trees, that kind of thing. And obviously, as we know, with you know, sort of the fey folk and the other associated creatures, they do they are naturally drawn to those types of um, areas. So trees, Nature woodland, spirits. bushes, yeah, exactly. Nature, yeah. Spirits, um, which is what they have a big drawing to. So. Um, so yeah, and and this um, would have been quite recent as well, um, at least within the last ten years, I believe. Oh, so not even so like, not even as a like child. No, they didn't no, this, that... the person was an adult. Yeah, like our that's, age, I think that's yeah. maybe even a little bit more compelling, really, because yeah. well, we discussed it before about children making things up and yeah, such. And exactly, no, this was a this no, this was an adult. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. adults are capable of they're also capable up of as well. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're adults. We don't do that anymore. We don't lie. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you sully my name? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, but no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I believe. Obviously, you person. trust them. You know, uh, them yeah, I, I wouldn't. And... Have, to be honest, I wouldn't have read it out if I didn't, you know, believe that what they were saying was. You know, it was true. If it was just someone writing in with just a sort of a nonsense story, just to try and, I don't know, get a bit of notoriety or something, I would have been like, "Really?" Come Stayed on, anonymous, like, though, haven't they? You come know, on. It's... but but yeah, it's um, yeah. no, the, the yeah, it was very, you know, it was a very genuine, um, you know, sort of uh, you know account, um, and and yeah, so yeah, so it was another another listener interaction. So thank you to the person that sent it in they will no doubt be yeah, listening to this when very it, much when it when it comes out so uh yeah hopefully i haven't got your story wrong <laughs> but um <laughs> but no i thought that was very uh i thought that was very interesting um oh but, excellent so yeah but again likewise would, if anyone else has any that they want to uh send in about this or any other interaction or mm -hmm. experience then um yeah, yeah it just so happened that keep them this, coming in. Uh, you said this came up before they listened before. to the previous episode where we actually mentioned episode. yeah exactly yeah it did yeah so they hadn't even listened to the banshee episode when we to find out when we said that we were going to be doing be. the next one on fairies before this came across as a potential uh yeah as a potential um mm. story so i think that you know if you wasn't gonna you know sort of believe it which which, which we, you know, which I of course do. I think that adds a bit of uh, well, credibility to it as well. That it wasn't just. I oh, that's, that's what you would you know. call. That's what you would call a synchronicity. A synchronicity, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Right there. Yeah. So that's cropped up. That's fell into your lap before they exactly. listened before to the we, episode. Yeah, and I was just like, I know where I'm going to read this one out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So no, thank you to uh, listener for. Submitting that, um, mm. but at the at the open of the episode, I mentioned there being a quite famous bit of uh, literature that's got a uh, quite a, a close uh, relation to sort of fairies, and you sort of touched on it on your first story um, a, a little earlier with the baby left in the the field, yeah. supposedly taken by you know sort of fairies and 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 whatnot. Um, 
this one, uh, this will be brief, so I'll just uh, fly through it if, uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, crack on, mate. But this one involves uh, a Scottish novelist by the name of James M. Barry, um, who lost his older brother, David, um, when he fell through um, some ice whilst they were out skating. Um, James was only six at the time. Uh, I don't think it notes how old um, David was, but we know that he was older. Um, but but David, the one that sadly passed, was their, was their mother's favourite. Uh, and this was obviously known between the two. Ouch. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so to try and comfort her after David died, James would pretend to be him to kind of help comfort the mother, wow. which is which is dark. Um, now, I mean, that's did... that's all different levels of mental health issues I mean, imagine, right there, isn't imagine it? That, that's just like, like... Knowing that he was the favourite and then you've also got to pretend to be him to help bring your mother comfort because you, just you being there isn't enough. You've got to pretend to be your dead brother to oh. I know, man. It's dark. Oh, no. It's dark. Um, Feel for you, James. Feel for I, you. I, I know. Um, so this obviously brought, as I say, his mother much you know, peace and comfort. And uh, it actually inspired James to create his most famous work, which was a story about a free-spirited young boy who could fly uh, and lived on a magical island called Neverland. Ah, this was a boy that never grew up. J.M. Barry, who wrote Peter Pan. Yeah, and so something like a you know, a, a, I mean, a typical Disney. They've taken quite a dark, you know, sort of, yeah. with a, you know, quite a sinister origin, and turned it into this lovely, fantastical, pretty musical film where it's actually got quite a dark, <laughs> quite a dark yeah. story, or certainly a you know, sort of a, an origin. And I thought that. That's why I mentioned when you went through your first story about the you know young boy left abandoned, you know picked up by a you know fairy carried away mm -hmm. to another realm. You know that's pretty well, much the opening scene to Hook, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say that everyone that's our yeah. age has seen Hook and Hook. Yeah. they've got it with very very fond memories of that film. Oh yeah, as well you know. But that is that's Lovely. basically it. And yeah, exactly. I never noticed it as because we were discussing this on Thursday about Hook. He wasn't that's right. left out. Peter wasn't no. left out. No. It was like... His the, stroller the, got blown away, didn't it? stroller wind. got blown yeah. away on the wind. Yeah. And then Tinkerbell came along and picked him up. They went, yeah, grabbed yeah, him that and all, swiped. Yeah. yeah, that all sounded a bit, you know, she knows what she was doing. <laughs> yeah, well, She knows. Yeah, which in fairness does tie into the belief, very, very much believed theory on, on what the Fae folk would, you know, would do. Although we've sort of established that she was probably more... You know, pixie than than Fay, but it, by appearance mm -hmm. at least, yeah, she certainly had those kind of fairy intentions with uh, with yeah, taking young human infants. And Peter mm -hmm. Pan was a uh, yeah, a, a sort of a perfect represent representation of that for you know for sort of a pop culture reference, really. Mm -hmm. um, and I did find um, I think it might be even be worth mentioning now. I mean, we've already yeah. spoken about some you know, fairly benevolent aspects of it, but also yeah. maybe some of the more negative aspects. And yeah, I know I, you found some dark ones. I found you? these. Yeah. yeah, I did find some very dark ones. actually. Yeah. And I, um, they seem, those stories seem to be in a bit more detail than I think because, because they're a bit more traumatic. That's like, they're trying to get more information out there. Yeah. So I've come across a lot of stories on the benevolent side of things that you're okay. supposed to call them benevolent where, some people have just been walking through the woods. They've heard yeah. some music, looked around, they've seen some little people, and these little people have gone, <gasps> bosh, gone, that sort of thing. But I did find some um, pretty bad ones, really. Um, but I found a dichotomy with regards to like the fairy realm, um, okay. and it's called the Seely and the Unseely Courts of Scottish Fairies. Oh, uh, yeah, I found that, yeah. Yeah, now yeah, it, right. it shows like a very clear separation of the phase into good and bad groupings. That's that's right, and in, it's entailed in it is is it's almost unique in folklore, and this is from the Scottish side of things. So I'm kind of yeah. jumping a little bit ahead, but I think it applies, yeah, to all the other regions that we've looked at. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. Yeah. Now, what I find is even anyone that doesn't understand what seely or unseely means, seely is an old Anglo-Saxon word as silig or silek. 
and it means happy, prosperous, pious, auspicious, worthy, or blessed. Yeah. And unseely is the, the opposite of yeah. that. You know, the whole idea of as above, so below. Yeah. You know, there's a as a as a counterpart yeah. to each Absolutely. side of things. It's essentially good and bad. You've got the mm. good fairies and the bad fairies, haven't you? Good versus evil. Absolutely. Kind of thing. And I came across this this particular story, and it dates from 1911, and it's of a, a Walter Yeelin Evans Wentz. He published a book called The Fairy Faith in Celtic Countries. Okay. Um, now, he interviewed a 73-year-old man by the name of uh, Neil Colton, and okay. as a youth, in 1853, so this predates the book, obviously, yeah. um, one summer day, he, his brother, and his cousin... They were all um, put to task at gathering berries in the countryside. Okay. Now, they heard some inexplicable ethereal music cut on the air that was coming from beyond these rocks. Okay. So they decided to investigate where this sound was coming from, and they claimed that they had come across a small band of fairies dancing in a small clearing. And one of these little folk, a woman dressed in red, suddenly noticed that they were being watched and aggressively rushed toward them. So instead of bolting the other way, yeah. she's, you know, she seems a bit unhappy with regards to being spotted. Okay. And as she comes, you know, comes towards him Rick, um, quite aggressively, she picks up a stick and strikes his cousin across the cheek with it. <laughs> right. Right. And then okay. she falls back and she grabs Colton's brother's arm. Um, the group panic and the, they run away. And at some point along the way back to um, back to their house, Colton's cousin, uh, she collapsed on the ground, seemingly unconscious. Oh, right. So I don't know whether or not it's through exhaustion, through yeah. shock or, or yeah. whatever, but the girl's father and a priest by the name of Father Ryan then came to the scene and Ryan said a prayer over her body. I mean, that's how it's written in the account, and that doesn't sound great. That he's, he's that's you know, not ideal, is it? Yeah. Is he pronouncing her dead? Yeah. At that point, helping you know, her pass but, over with a prayer, or yeah, yeah, and yeah. but she eventually she does slowly wake up. Uh, right. She's very groggy and very uneasy on her feet. Right. Um, but the the priest, uh, Father Ryan, in particular, he, he comes to the conclusion that if it hadn't been for her grabbing Colton Brother's arm as she yeah. fell back. And as they all started running away, she could have been taken by these fairies and never seen again. Never seen again. Oh, wow. Okay. Which is a an aspect that crops up quite a lot. Um, but you think it was that, grabbing the brother's arm that kind of broke, broke that sort of contact or broke part of the cycle, which meant she couldn't then be, you know, sort of taken or... Well, the fact that she'd been struck by it. Yeah. You know, there's already that that crossover from if if it is a different world, a different dimension, or yeah. a different realm. There's already that crossover that's been initiated by this by them, woman I in, in yeah. red. Yeah, yeah. Um, then, it, you know, it's if she didn't grab onto something or grab mm. onto someone of this realm, mm. the material realm, human realm, whatever. Yeah then potentially she could have been drawn in. Like they could have, the two boys, they could have legged it, not looked back behind them. And then she could have potentially have gone in that instance. I mean, that's at least what they seem to be experiencing now. Yeah. Now there is one that does come from Scotland that follows a similar sort of thing. Okay. And it's from uh, Aberfoyle and it's, uh, it's named as the fairy hill. And this involves Andy. a Reverend Robert. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> the particular mound known as Fairy Hill. <laughs> yeah. um, so, Reverend Robert Kirk was a minister, a, a Gaelic scholar, and a folklorist, best known for the Secret Commonwealth. Ah. So, it's a yeah, it's a thesis on yeah. fairy folklore, witchcraft, ghosts, and second sight. Um, <laughs> anyone that doesn't know uh, second sight. It's a type of extrasensory perception described as a phenomenon by the people of the Scottish Highlands. Yeah. So Kirk, um, unfortunately, he died before he could uh, see the the secret Commonwealth published. Um, But legends arose after Kirk's death 
saying that he'd been taken away to the fairy world for revealing the secrets of the good people. Now, we discussed this before on Thursday that we did. in these stories and the ancient folklore, they're not the word fairy wasn't really used. It's, it, the fairy is more right. of a, 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 a recent sort of thing. So it's they more were of a recent called, usage, yeah. They were, they were um, yeah, as you say, people didn't like to directly refer to them as fairy because they felt that that kind of drew them in or brought some sort of bad bad luck with it so they yeah referred to them as yeah i think even little those people, that may must not be mentioned he who shan't be named and all that business yeah it was uh little people or hidden people i think were the mm. two popular kind of sub references yeah. uh, i guess the good people or yeah the good people yeah yeah and uh so there's also another guy that was involved in regards to researching um the the, the circumstances surrounding kirk's death and that was a Scottish studies and folklore scholar, Stuart Sunderland, or Sanderson, sorry, Stuart okay. Sanderson. And he surmised this. He said it was, um, it, he was in the, Kirk, so Kirk was in the habit of taking a turn in his nightgown on summer evenings on the ferry hill beside the manse. <laughs> <laughs> in order to get a breath of fresh air before retiring to bed. And one evening in 1692, the 14th of May, his body was found lying, apparently dead, upon the hill. Now, Kirk's tomb is located in Aberfoyle Churchyard. And a popular legend questions whether his ashes or even his body is actually buried there. Mm. Um, and after his death, all these folklores arose saying that his body had been taken away by the fairies to become the chaplain of the fairy queen. Yeah. So... There was also another gentleman that was involved in the research, and it was a Roderick uh, Sace. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that last name, but it's S-A-Y-C-E. Okay. And he was um, at the Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology at the University of Cambridge, and he noted the similarity between the legend of Kirk's death and the Germanic legend of Daedric von Bern, who in one tale was taken away by a dwarf when he died, and according to says, both share a theme common to ancestral spirit cults that departed are taken away to the fairyland. Yeah. So, yeah, again, it's that idea of being the, the, the soul or the body or literally being taken from one realm, our realm, the material realm, yeah. into fairyland, fairy world, neverland. Neverland, yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, it's all, all coming from somewhere. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. No, that's, um, yeah, that's interesting. That, yeah, I, I found the same thing on the Sealy and the Unsealy court. Um, and uh, I thought that was really quite interesting. And yeah, that story I remember you saying, uh, previously, I think is really, um, really, really quite compelling. Actually, I, I like that one because again, it has that kind of dark undertone, um, in terms of you know us being taken to that realm to serve another purpose almost like a life after death type thing you know that you you just you you live but in a different you know realm in a you know in a different as a different being or a, yeah. know, a different state that's the, the idea know. of an afterlife almost yeah it? exactly yeah absolutely yeah so i kind of yeah but what it seems like, like as well is that you could possibly be taken before your mortal death that's yes. also something that seems quite uh apparent as a as an option yeah you yeah, can't really. Really. So, you died. yeah, yeah. So when when he did, you know, you know, when he was in the habit of going up to the mound on his in his nightgown, in his nightgown, to go and get a him. breath of fresh air. <laughs> you, yeah. you can't see it, but I'm making quotation marks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what he tells the missus evening. anyway. Yeah, yeah. Just going, just going for a stroll, yeah. babe. Up, don't worry about me. Yeah. You need to put your trousers on. No, 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 I don't need my trousers. That's no, fine. No, just I don't, I don't need my trousers. Just no. going up to the mound. Yeah, in my nightgown. Going to go out in my nightgown. And get some air to them. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, going to have an air in. Yeah. Don't mind me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. Well, it's it's Scotland. I was uh, guessing they didn't really wear trousers back then. No, I imagine kilts, it was all it? skirts it's anyway, wasn't it? Yeah. It's all skirts. Kilt, sorry, kilts. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta correct myself. <laughs> um, yeah, there was. Um, yeah, I mean, you, and you, you briefly mentioned uh, the uh, Germanic um, 
origins mm. uh, for fairies, which was one of the other origins that I um, sort of looked into as as, long, as well as the uh, Slavic as well. But um, before actually jumping into the Germanic bit specifically, it, it, it did make a lot of references or comparisons back to the English um, like iterations of fairy or, or origins. Um, okay. And a couple of things that came up, which uh, the first one came up in our Banshee episode, um, which is why I want to mention it again. Um, but um, the Valkyrie uh, of, uh, of Norse uh, legend and, and mythology um, mm. have been uh, likened to a fairy as they were also likened to being a possible uh, Banshee. Um, because again, they don't necessarily commit the death, but they, you know, they they deliver the news that you know that someone has died, and like with fairies, taking yeah. the dead away, you know. So there's a lot of um, you know, there's a few. I say a lot. There's a few similarities there again with, you know, with the Valkyrie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, I think that um, uh, Roderick Sacy. I think you're right. I think he hits mm. the nail on the head there, especially with regards to that, yeah. because. The Valkyries are taking the soul to Valhalla to yeah. be with Odin. Odin, yeah. um, you know, to be there ready to fight in his army for when Ragnarok occurs. Yeah, and I suppose exactly, it, yeah, yeah it's that idea of taking the, that person from one realm to another, to like, another, um, yeah, to like serve a man, purpose, that sort of thing as well, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I thought that was um, quite interesting. That even though I looked into the the Germanic origins, but they mentioned. They mentioned that. Um, the other one that um, that did catch my eye, which was it was something that I did find in the English uh, origin, uh, which again came up in the uh, Germanic, was um, was reference to um, the time of uh, of King Arthur, um, oh. which I know also came up in a in a previous um, episode, didn't it? That's right, it did. Yeah. Um, very very briefly, but yeah, yeah. I like. I, I'm fascinated with the idea of King Arthur, though. I oh, must no, say, no, from I, a literary point of view, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Um, and, and this one, um, it kind of involves all of them, really, all of the sort of the big names in that kind of legend. Um, but specifically with uh, with this one, uh, Morgan Le Fay um, mm. or Morgana, um, who was also you know a female. Um, Sort of sorceress or, or magician. That's right. Yeah. Um, was uh, was she's, King Arthur's half sister? Yeah, um, she's often portrayed as movie. the villain as well, isn't she? She is in the more modern tellings. Well, she's in the Nick Cage film, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, and she was very much the the sort of the the villain, um, the the evil sorceress. Oh, okay. She she pops up right at the uh, right at the end. So again, a, you know, pop pop culture reference. Um, so yeah, so she was King Arthur's half sister, and she was believed to be uh, a fairy um and obviously her her name you know le fay obviously french for the fairy um they they believe that um the the kind of the fairy origins um kind of stemmed from that and they actually used her name um to associate with with those beings and uh, and creatures um which uh, i thought was quite an interesting take on the uh, potential origin um at least because of course we don't yet know whether the legend of king arthur is just that a legend or whether he actually uh existed um, yeah there's there's a lot of um there's been some research into it that the some be people believe that the tale actually originated in in uh, france or yeah. what it was called at the time frankia yeah um That's but right. even going older than that that it was an old uh, Germanic story. Yeah, exactly, um, yeah. Which I think is why it's cropped up in my research on the Germanic origins, uh, more mm. so than it did the um, the, the English. Um, but a couple of other um, sort of characters from that legend sort of popped up. So, um, of course, the Lady of the Lake, um, who gifted King Arthur Excalibur, his you know, famous uh, sword. Uh, she's um, believed to be... Uh, fairy um although she'd be more of a, a a sort of a water sprite uh type of um fairy or a no, nymph she, she as, was some um, watery bint throwing out swords watery <laughs> bint throwing out swords exactly right yeah. there's no basis for government at all <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly right um <laughs> you knew it was coming exactly you knew it was yeah coming. <laughs> um 
Yeah, so she's uh, yes, yeah, so she's also claimed to be, and uh, and also uh, Guinevere, um, King Arthur's wife, um, was also believed to be um, uh, of uh, of the Fae. Um, the, the interesting thing for me as well was that it, it is also widely believed that the the Knights of the Round Table were either born of fairies uh, or they married female fairies. Um, so in some way, there's that you know kind of fairy sort of connection. And of course, you've got um, you know, as well as Morgana, you've also got Merlin as well, the uh, you know infamous sort of magician. So was you know was he a a uh, a fay of sorts with his magic powers mm. and his trickery and and uh, and whatnot. So it's you know it's believed that he's also part of that you know sort of realm as well. So you know could that be why there's no evidence or or anything or yeah, any I mean, real stories of their existence because they disappeared to a, another realm or indeed existed within another realm. You know that's that's a absolutely. part of the, I had a you know sort of belief and it was the previous episode where that guy was it pike um was looking into the final resting place of oh um colin perk colin perk that was it not Pike. yeah colin perk yeah Yeah. he was um no women in black episode that's right yeah he was looking into the uh um final resting place and he was also warned off of investigating Mm -hmm. further by the uh wib someone yeah from someone so again another drawback to a previous episode it's all yeah, well, but what, I, what i find so <laughs> yeah we've all seen that wet red string meme in it charlie day with the red <laughs> string, how's the research uh, going yeah like this <laughs> yeah. we'll share so that connected. as well yeah yeah well but that, again that's what i like about um the the, the story of king arthur is is yeah i guess it's all the people's stories and uh ideas as to who the characters were where they came from and it was always said that uh, Merlin was supposed to have been a druid. Yes. And yeah. there's not much in the mainstream, I guess, really, that not many people know too much about the druids, which is a bit of a shame because they are the ancient people of the land that we live yeah. and the land that we have, you know, grown from. So yeah. we should really know. Should know really, yeah. I mean, I, of it, what it, is it, available, it, I, out of it, but we don't really know much at all. No, I don't. Oh, so I'm I'm sort of I'm one of those sadly, but uh, mm. but uh, but yeah, uh, but, but mean, no, so I thought that was um, yeah, well exactly yeah, yeah potentially. Um, so I thought that was interesting. It, it draws in sort of an, another legend to kind of help su- support its own by you know drawing these um, you know sort of comparisons. So um, no, I mean that that caught my eye as soon as I saw Morgana pop up. I thought, hang about. <laughs> mm. This is going to be interesting. And then yeah, this whole yeah. other. I mean, again, it was another black hole to add to the black hole that we'd already tumbled down and it was just going <laughs> yeah. to be a constant um tumbling of uh i think we we certainly peeked holes. into the warren didn't we didn't we just yeah didn't we just yeah. christ yeah um so but no it was interesting to to kind of find that i'm sure there is far more to it but i just thought for the mm. purposes of this episode i thought that was enough to kind of draw comparisons and you know and, and potential uh references between you know sort of the two yeah, well, there's there was again going going down a similar sort of route to what you spoke about there. I, I, I want to talk about this um, one that actually comes from Ireland, and okay. it's in the 1800s. There was a report of what appears to have been a whole murder, I say murderous group of fairy folk um, okay. that rose up and attacked a witness. Now the story was actually told by Claire Westrop, okay. Westrop. Um, and in this case, it seems to revolve around uh, the discovery of a fairy fort by a moat. Okay. Now, this is near uh, Listunfana, in a region that's very, very rich with fairy folklore. Okay. And I may end up butchering the pronunciation of this particular location, so okay. bear with me. <laughs> Uh, and she before. goes on no we don't one, once or twice <laughs> she goes on to say that at the natural fort crowned by uh, the small ring wall of <laughs> Kro Aga Ti Om uh, near Lundisfana or Listunfana even we were told to cross ourselves as a protection against the Danan okay now, the place was nevertheless undoubtedly regarded by the older people living near it as the most dangerous fairy fort. Yeah, okay. And we were told, 
how certain badger hunters who brought drink with them mm. after a long festival on its summit got benighted. They got benighted there. So oh, benighted, right, wow. they got attacked. Yeah. They eventually returned home, sobering up by through fright, as they suddenly saw a whole fleet of them coming up the mound and escaped only just in time. So wow. yeah. what they what they describe as them are small, pale, uh, human-like creatures that were carrying small spears and screaming in a language that they didn't understand. Wow. So okay. warrior fairies. Warrior like, fairies, yeah, they're warrior, warrior fairies. Tribes, yeah. Yeah. But now this uh, I'm glad you said that word tribe, because <laughs> there's a long, long legend over in Ireland yeah. about the Tuatha Dadanam, which yes. translates to the tribe of Dan. Yeah. Now I'm gonna quickly gloss over this because again this was another one of those deep rabbit holes that i could have just gone well into and just exactly gone. yeah potentially there's a whole other episode just on this mm. now um the lost there's the tribe of dan is one of the lost tribes that came from uh the levant which is the westernmost point of the mediterranean so the land yeah. around that sort of area now apparently there was 10 tribes that migrated away from that area the tribe of dan being one yeah. of them dan now dan 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 Dan. Dan. Is that oh, Dan? Uh, Steve. Dan? Steve. Oh, okay. It's not <laughs> yeah, it wasn't driver Dan, Steve, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> it wasn't that at all. <laughs> they were charged. The tribe itself was charged with leaving the Serpent's Trail. Now, the tribe of Dan in particular were great seafarers, and they were able to build these ships that allowed them to sail incredibly quickly. So yeah. these ships have been likened to those that the uh, the Scandinavians sailed over to okay. Britain with, Britain, like the, the long boats. boats. Yeah. So let's say the Serpent's Trail. So the Serpent's Trail would be where the boat goes because the serpent was always at the head of the boat. That's right. So the way they did it was they actually named various different things after what they, what they discovered. So anything that had Dan... Din, Don, or Do, something like that. You know, the five, the five Ds. Ds of fairy dodgeball, isn't it? Dan, <laughs> yeah. Din, Don, Dan. <laughs> you, can, you can dodge a Do, you can dodge a fairy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Sardinia being one of them, that was one of their, it, was, it translates as the realm of Dan, um, Denmark. <laughs> Denmark yeah, actually translates it, yeah. as Dan's Mark or the resting place of Dan. Um, but I won't go over that. That was pretty much where I'm going to leave it because it was a really, really okay. interesting um, part of actual human anthropology that has been able to be... They've they, they found this. This is found to be true. Yeah, there's actually... Um, so yeah, this historic. Is a, yeah. This is a potential of where that... These could actually have been real people. Where that culture's origin came from is actually a real yeah. people believed to have existed. Yeah. Absolutely. And there's a really good video on YouTube that if anyone is interested in taking, checking that out, search for where is the tribe of that today. And it's by truth fits. It's only a 15 minute video, but it's a really, really good summary of what the tribe of Dan is about. And it does mention the two other da Danan, right. which was supposed to be a race of beings that had yeah. magical powers as well. Okay. And what was it called again? Sorry, the, the video It's called, uh, where is the tribe of Dan today? Okay, and it's by Truth Vids. Yeah, well, shit. I mean, we've um, also we've both um, watched it, but we'll again we'll share it on the the socials mm. just for ease. If any listeners want to sort of give it a go, but we, we've not obviously, or you haven't dived into it anymore because again, it was one of those vast black holes that would take us on a complete tangent, yeah. which almost would have taken us away from. You know, kind and of you were talking I'm about. really, I'm really having to hold myself back here. I know, I, I can tell. I find anthropology <laughs> yeah. so interesting. No, and this I'm one so really passionate is, about it as well. And this one really is interesting, and it gives that kind of, you know, it gives that kind of which we always try and look for. It's that real world explanation for mm. something. So you know, real world evidence that supports either this theory or this legend. You know, where these creatures come from. And yeah, it turns out in in this particular origin 
um, which derives, you know, sort of partly from Ireland, as you say, um, that it could mm. actually have been a um, like a species of people um, yeah. that were interacted with, um, which and is there's... potentially where the whole fairy thing came from in that part of the world, bleed, bleeding into the Celtic stuff. Um, Absolutely, because well. it, it even uh, to okay, I don't want to go too much into it because I will ramble and I'll just go <laughs> word vomit <laughs> at, at all of you because <laughs> yeah. there is there's a lot about our human history that we don't know um, in yeah. the masses that is, but it's still being studied, it's being discovered, there's always new stuff coming out. Yeah. Anthropology is is one of those it's one of those subjects that is. It's really, really worth getting into and finding out exactly where we've come from, yeah. where these where migrations of people have been across the world at what different times. And exactly. there's huge links between the Tuatha de Danan with regards to their um, their uh, appearance, their attributes and everything, yeah. and the Asia gods of Scandinavian culture. Mm. So the gods from Asgard. Yeah. So, which is really interesting because they come from the east. So in Scandinavia, right, as I yeah. say, they come from the east. And this particular realm, the, the, the Levant, is sort of southeast, more, yeah. south, more south than, yeah. than east, but it's southeast. Yeah. So it does actually show this tribe of Dan, their, mm. their migration through all these various different places. Yeah. Um, so check it out. Check out that video yeah. and... and it's a yeah, very it's very interesting um, part no it's definitely uh yeah it's definitely a good one as you say about you know sort of migration and stuff and you know obviously i um, mentioned a little earlier about the um the the germanic stuff um and their their legend or their folklore draws itself from um again we mentioned uh, uh sort of uh you know gnomes um goblins dwarfs as being a particular you know type of fairy well this seems to be mm. the kind of origin of the Germanic folklore, um, particularly referenced as the moss people or the moss folk, um, mm. they could they also are referred to as the wood people or the wood folk. So it gives you an idea on on, on kind of where they're found in uh, in, in in Germany. Um, but they are basically considered a class of uh, fairy folk, and yeah, they have an intimate connection to trees and the forest which is yeah. you know, kind of a given by how, what they're referenced by. Um, they are described similar to dwarfs, um, being small in stature, grey and old-looking, um, hairy and clad in moss. Um, uh, now, again, another I don't know about you, but certainly when I was reading this, their description for anyone who's uh, seen Frozen... <laughs> The uh, yes. I don't know that came up in uh, a couple of episodes. <laughs> yeah, didn't it? Yeah. That song. <laughs> um, but they they go and see these little these little dwarf like creatures um, in the, the rock trolls, aren't they? The rock trolls. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That that description reminded me of them because they're obviously small in stature, grey and old looking, covered in moss and yeah, that kind of thing. So it and there's a lot so, of Germanic folklore in in. In both Disney, of the Frozen films, yeah, and both the Frozen specifically, yeah. So I wonder, I, I did wonder whether there was a, a kind of deliberate, um, kind of borrowing of you know the the sort mm. of the description in, in in that. But again, just for another kind of popular reference, that's that's what kind of drew my mind to when I when I read. Yeah, there's that. been there have been some again. I cut a brushed across them weeks ago, not necessarily in this research, but right. weeks ago in other researches where people have actually analyze the various different um references that are made in both frozen one and two yeah not just like the the characters and such but yeah. also the movements and symbols and everything else that's involved in in those films yeah and it's from from memory it was very very interesting to see that they've actually put a lot of effort yeah, into yeah. put in these so cultural the, the accuracy culturally yeah oh yeah yeah. And the relevance to these particular symbols and and actions and and stuff yeah. like that. So like when she's, uh, I can't remember what her name is, the one that does all the ice and everything. When yeah. she, she, um, Elsa. Yeah. When she builds these structures and whatnot, mm. there's sacred geometry. Yeah. You know it as well. Yeah. So again, this it goes a lot deeper. It goes far. I don't deeper, know if they're but... doing it 
don't know if they're doing it on purpose it's whether it's subliminal it or deliberate things. or or kind of what but yeah but yeah like mm. you say there's all those references and and this definitely um sort of struck something with me when i read those descriptions that was kind of the first thing that where my mind went in terms of a, a real world sort of reference um but uh but yeah they're um basically the the origin um and the the, the the description the name sort of derives from an old germanic word that basically means forest demon so you can get an idea of the sort of the persona that these things mm. would you know would would kind of um would take on um uh, and interestingly um and i know this will draw back to i believe our bigfoot episode um no oh. uno um Numero uno, the big but, man uh, <laughs> yes it um, but parallels have also been drawn between the moss people and um, the woodwos, um, also known ah. as the wild man. And the wild man does come up quite a lot in, in Germanic folklore. But yes. I know that also in our Bigfoot episode, and I think specifically in your research, I think you found that there were some possible connections between the Bigfoot and woodwos. That's um, right, yeah. Which, and um, the green man as well, which is... The green man, uh, the wild man, yeah all mm. kind of pretty much one of the same from what i've seen certainly from the the germanic side so again that was another um parallel to uh, another sort of episode so it's all these again all these sort of uh, connections but i thought that was mm. um that was quite interesting um so the thing that the, the the sort of the deal with these moss uh moss people moss folk is that they would typically uh, borrow items from humans or they would ask for help um, the person, if they obliged, would be generously uh, compensated um, for you know for their help or for allowing these presumably tools or you know or, or sort of equipment to be uh, you know to be borrowed. Um, now, the way that they would be compensated would be by the moss folk giving them good advice. So, I guess much like the banshee, where they would you know, sort of let them know about what some, you know, an enemy was up to or, you know. Oh, yeah, like the Ben Nye and the... Yeah, uh, putting them down uh, a certain path to riches. The and, and Yeah, such. that's it. So, you know, certain, you know, riches and, you know, uh, benefits and, and that kind of thing. Well, um, we know how they had to uh, sneak up on the Ben Nye and capture her. We in, in do, yes. Get and get all the knowledge. So what do they have to do with the Woodwose? Well, I, I would dread to think... I would dread to think. I don't even want to go. Make down up your own route. minds, people. But yeah, we'll leave that to the listeners <laughs> to imagine. And I'm sure all their minds have gone to the same uh, the same place. Um, <laughs> if they haven't, then they're not on our wavelength. Shame on you. Yeah, we are way <laughs> below them. Yeah, we're way below. Yeah, way below. <laughs> we're on um, a much lower frequency. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, now that the odd, this is where, where it again takes a sort of an odd turn, like much of these do. Um, they would ask humans um, for breast milk to help feed their own young. Um, now, how they got the milk hasn't been described, but again, I'm sure we can all, uh, we can all imagine. Um, yeah. Um, the female of the uh, boss people um, could bring about a, a plague with one hand but then also offer the cure with the other. Um, and it was only the female of the, uh, the moss folk. So it was known that a plague would ravage a town or a village. Um, mm. And just at the point of, you know, despair, you know, local villagers or, you know, whatever, just local, you know, sort of humans would, would walk to the edge of the, the forest and the moss, you know, the moss people would walk out and the cure would be wouldn't be directly given to the people, but they would mm. say, right, you know, you need to get this herb, you need to get this mineral, you need to get this, this, and this, mix it uh. together, and this will cure your plague. And f more often than not, it would actually, you know, it, it would so, actually work. So it'd be like, we've given you the plague. You don't know that, but you're asking for help. We're now going to give you that help, and you'll mm. be forever in our debt, sort of thing. So it was kind of like a, oh, okay. a trickery. Is that sort forever of... being in the debt? Thing yeah, again, it's a bit it? like the government. You know, the government they they cause oh, the yeah. problem, and then they offer you the solution, and you're like, oh, thank you. 
Like, That's awfully topical there, Callum. Awfully, I know, right? I know, I know. If we do, we do. What topical, could you possibly be talking about? We do, mate, we do topical on the, on this podcast as well as uh, the make believe and the fantastical. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> we like to keep it relevant. Well, but we draw from all corners here. That's it. Keeping with the times. Yeah, that's it. We draw references from everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Excellent. Um, and yeah, so that's really the the main kind of basis of the Germanic uh, folklore with regards to their kind of fairy origin. And again, it's taken on a slightly different image to what mm-hmm. certainly I and probably most people would have imagined when you when you hear of fairy, you, you, as we went over earlier, you, you imagine the, you know, the it's down to Disney, isn't it? little flying creature. Yeah, exactly. It's Disney again, kind of changing, changing a, a story or an origin to fit their, you know, kind of fit their agenda. Which well, yeah, is, again, like, Think harking back to like Disney, you know the idea of Beauty and the Beast. Like, I remember the yeah. story of it. Yeah, it was that he refused entry to this this hag. Yeah, you know this this, and then you know when he refused entry because he was awful, she turned she into this him. beautiful yeah. fairy yeah. and then cursed him. Yeah, and she cursed him with this plague, which you know ravaged the forest around him until the 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 prophecy was fulfilled or the curse yeah. was broken. Yeah, you know, basically, and, yeah. Yeah, it's that it's that yeah. old idea that's it's, it's a tale as old as time. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Booyah! With a, with a uh, roll the credits, and that's us done. Thank you for joining. <laughs> that's brilliant. Oh like fuck that. it, I'm really sorry about that. Very it's well like, done. That was out like, of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. That was that was impressive, man. Kudos for that. For the oh, uh, for the reference. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that, that sort of really covers the um yeah, that, that, that comes to the you know the Germanic origin. Again, a lot of the stories or the folklore was sort of really much of a muchness. There wasn't really anything overly compelling, but I thought the origin was good in itself because it was different to the English one, in the sense that these were you know specifically kind of you know wood folk um and, and sort of dwarves or you know, sort of goblin. actually like been able to almost like pinpoint them directly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not what we've been able to do with, with the English stuff. No, not necessarily. No, there's like I say, it's different variations or, you know, iterations mm. of, of that kind of origin. Uh, and even the descriptions themselves change, whereas this one seemed to be, you know, a little bit more um, specific. And aside from the story about them being able to, uh, um, you know, bring about a plague, but then also cure it at the same time. And then also interacting with humans to, you know, borrow, you know, tools or uh, ask for help. That was really the kind of the general premise of a lot of the the kind of the stories. There wasn't anything mm. particular, you know, like an actual physical account where it was like on, you know, this date in this year, this was reported, yeah. happened, you know. So it was, it's all very, it's more it's, legendary and more folklore, you know, the, yeah. I found the natural. I mean, these stories were quite likely told long before written language, really. Yes, you yeah. Know? So it's yeah, it's kind of worked its way through time, and no doubt it's been modernised and bastardised. Oh yeah, whatever else to you know, to create well, got, some. You got things like uh, the Brothers Grimm and and, and such. Which... Oh yeah, them yeah, which pretty much funded as a, not funded um we... solely influenced again. Disney. Disney. <laughs> if it wasn't yeah. for the Brothers Grimm, I don't think we'd have Disney, to be honest. But uh, this is true, yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe, maybe we've just thought of another episode. Maybe the Brothers Grimm, although they weren't cryptids per se, but uh, certainly they certainly spoke about them. That's certainly for sure. their legends, yeah. Um, yeah. The only other, um, just to sort of move on fairly briefly uh, before we look at, I guess, wrapping up the um, the Slavic uh, origin. Um, mm. That was one, you know, because we've done the Celtic, we've done the English um, and the Germanic. Um, the other one was the French, but I really couldn't find it. Other than the, you know, Morgan Le Fay reference, which again came up in the Germanic, I couldn't really find anything overly sort of compelling with the French mm. one, which is much like the same as the the Slavic one. There isn't, there wasn't really anything in their origins that kind of, again... There was anything to, different. It was nothing different, but at the same time, there was nothing that kind of pinpointed a particular, you know, creature. So was it a pixie? Was mm. it a fairy? Was it a gnome, a goblin? You know, th- th- there wasn't really any one kind of iteration. Whereas with the Slavic, it seemed that they used they used one term, you know, much like we use fairy to depict 
a number of different creatures. They did the same. They mm. used a term that covered, you know, gods, goddesses, fairies, vampires, you know, whatever. I guess before the words like vampire and fairy were were sort of, I guess, created, they just used their own yeah. one word. So, you know, you, you you would think that, you know, you'd start reading about what you thought was maybe a fairy origin, but then it would start naming goddesses or it would start mentioning vampires. And so it was all very kind of, uh, was it convoluted, I guess, or very, you know, sort of over yeah. overdone with other influences so there wasn't really any one kind of origin which i thought was interesting or or sort of compelling enough so i didn't really dive too much into the the slavic or the the french ones because again you could have it, it could have gone spent all your time getting involved in that side of it and it could yeah. actually have been quite complicated like we was we was talking about it beforehand yeah. but yeah, it was yeah then pretty much having the same name yeah so i mean like the goddess the vampires the fairies the, all these various different creatures just not necessarily yeah being called something individually just we don't know what that is so what was it, it was, uh... i mean I'll, I'll butcher it um but in it. russian it was beriginyas or in Beriginyas. it was berihinyas uh, so it was yeah. like a gurt and a her was the only real difference between kind of the two but again it was though it was those it was that one word in each of those cultures which would describe seemingly describe a whole host of different sort of things and so it was hard to kind of pinpoint a particular origin mm. because it, it all just seemed to come flooding in you know at the, at the, the same time it, it's, it's believed that there was you know a slavic sky god uh, perrin i believe his name was uh, when he was introduced to what is now known as the slavic lands um about around the sixth century um brought with him creatures that we now know as fairies and vampires but mm. because they all came together. It was seen as though they were all kind of like one of the same. So well, they they were just given is... the one sort of they were given the one sort of reference, and that and that yeah. was seemingly it. That was really the only person you could probably connect to. that with the idea of the Seely and the Unseely court, though. You know, we would yeah, still could, class yeah. that as Fay, the two yeah, yeah. courts as yeah, Fay, but to they an are, extent, I guess, yeah in one of the same one well, each a different side of the same coin so they're still fake well, they're just yeah I guess a the, good side and a bad side maybe i guess you could but i guess I, I found that they were all certainly from what i read and this was just my interpretation obviously I, you know i could be wrong in that but mm. I, I sort of found that it was just it, they were one of the same they were one they were the same side of the coin you know there wasn't any attempt at differentiating between all of the various beings like this particular goddess or this this sky god perrin or you know you know this reference this beraginyas um yeah. that they that they reference so and that's as far as i got with it because again it was you know like yourself with the tribe of dan it was there was the potential to go down a black hole which would have taken me i think so far from what we were or what we are talking about that yeah it, it would have been hard to get back to what i wanted to find out you know they were talking about their own sort of sky gods and their own goddesses and all this other thing and it was, oh, yeah. it was almost going into the foundation of like the origins of slavic religion as opposed to absolutely you're, you're starting to go into anthropology at that point yeah and, and that's and why I, I had to pull the plug because i thought i could get lost in this black hole mm. and it was almost enough content for its own episode there was so much kind of to it that i just I mean, like you with the other stuff i i had to kind of stop mm. while i was ahead otherwise i could have got lost in it to be honest yeah. again if people were you know particularly interested in, in kind of knowing more then um then yeah that that's kind of where i sort of got to and and stopped before i realized i could end up yeah <laughs> getting lost in yet another black yeah. hole yeah Let's see, yeah, um, this warren of black holes <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> but what i do i do want to mention a couple more stories before yeah, we sure. get off the fence and i'm going to try and get through these as uh, as yeah, quickly okay. as possible now go for it yeah yeah i mentioned one about stateside didn't i you did yes you did yes. i did i did mention one about state stateside yeah. now do we do a drum roll no, for where it was? Unfortunately, oh. no, we're not going back to West Virginia. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I teased you with it. I teased you, tempted you in, <laughs> slammed the door behind you, and yeah. you ain't getting out. And we're You're not getting out. out. Yeah. You're in the fairy realm now, my friend. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. 
<laughs> Welcome to the Thunderdome. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Thunderdome. <laughs> ah, excellent. <laughs> now, this one actually uh, involves a folk singer by the name of Artie Troll. And this oh, was okay. in 1972. Mm. Now, the majority of Artie's work um, revolved around uh, the state of New York. And it seems like he didn't really travel much further. Now, right. he was a he was a regular at the Woodstocks and such. Okay. Um, and in the, on this year in particular, he was taking uh, he was taking a walk along uh, this wood, woodland trail, a well trodden path, in fact. Mm. And uh, he'd been there many times before. And this particular time, he heard a chorus of strange voices on the air, commanding him to run, man, run. Yeah, which now, is that's a bit to... weird, anyway creep anyone out in the in woods yeah, you hear music and then you hear that being chanted with the yeah. music I mean, uh... <laughs> I mean american woodland's dangerous anyway pretty much know, yeah. with the various different you know fauna that they've got yeah. out there the big cats the bears and uh, wolves and such yeah, exactly, um, yeah. i'm not so sure about upstate new york in particular but i don't know yeah. certainly... well, there's a lot of farms up there so there might be a lot of woodland and I don't know about the wildlife specifically, but yeah. Yeah, the wildlife is what I I'm not sure about the yeah, wildlife in particular, yeah. but um, but either way, the wildlife wouldn't be shouting out, run, man, run. So no, that's beside no. the point. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these voices were supposedly accompanied by a strange melody of what sounded like fiddles and pipe instruments. Okay. Now, we spoke about this on a previous episode again, um, about music being heard on the air and disembodied yep. voices and right. such. So the music started growing and there didn't seem to be any particular like, discernible source. And so this kind of freaked Artie out a little bit and he, he picked up his pace. So as he made his way through the woods, he claimed that he had been met with a thunderous sound of crackling, like, some, uh, like a crackling of some sort, which has been um, reported in other people's accounts. Um, as well as what he describes as a great motion. So I didn't understand what he meant by that. So I, I looked into other stories in which they've reported on this. And it seems like he felt the air move. Okay. Now, whether or not that sounds like stepping into a vacuum. Yeah. Yeah or something like that, but he felt a great motion or like the air moving mm. that he couldn't quite explain. Right. And in the meantime, he found that his head was, that in his head was thousands of voices, thousands of words that made no sense. So right. again, maybe another language that's going over and over and over and over. Yeah. Um, when he got out of the woodland, the music and the voices melted away and it seemed rather aggressive rather aggressive is the way that he he felt like he was being chased by something right okay uh, i don't know whether it was the the great the great hunt or the fairy yeah. realm exactly yeah. yeah um but what he did say was he felt that he only withstood this great emotion and all these sounds and all these voices and he didn't succumb to it or whatever it was, was because he managed to actually get out of the forest in time. Right. Now, that's something that a lot of people, a lot of reports have come up. So it doesn't seem like it's a particular, it doesn't sound benevolent, that's for sure. No, definitely it's, not. You know, it sounds definitely very malevolent. much like they're, yeah. they're trying to get him. Yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. Like the, the spirits of the forest, the nature spirits, for some reason, are trying to get him. They're trying to take him. Like it was like sort of their version of a fox hunt. You know, they were playing the fiddles and that as their kind of warning music. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then, yeah. yeah that sort of thing. They're chanting. They're going to take yeah. him. Yeah, you best run, boy, or we're going to get you. <laughs> we're going to get you. Yeah. Um, and I found another one, another international uh, story oh, okay. that actually comes from uh, the other side of the world. Right. It's from Australia. Oh, now, right. okay. this is actually from a, a website called paranormalencounters.com. And a reader claimed that he had come face to face with uh, some sort of wood sprite in Australia known as a Wajari. Okay. Now, the Wajaris are, are well known to the Aboriginals. Um, and they know them as mischievous and sometimes violent little people. Right. Now, the witness claims that in the 1980s, 
um, again, he remained anonymous for this particular story. But in the 1980s, he had uh, been in the suburb of Perth as a child, uh, along with his brother and his cousins. They were playing hide and seek in the bushland when they heard a little noise nearby. So this kind of sort of echoes the story that I first went on about. Yeah. Um, where the, the cousin got struck in the face by a little angry woman. That's right, yeah. Um, when he turned towards the source um, and to go and have a look and see what it was about, he claims that he saw a small Aboriginal man that measured only 13 inches in height. A tiny little man had a spear in his hand. He glared at the witness angrily before throwing the spear at him. Oh, wow. Now, the spear got lodged in his foot because, for some reason, this child decided to go out barefoot in the Australian bushland. You, do. Yeah, you, you do. know, with all these various different creatures that are trying to kill you yeah. for the moment you step off the plane with regular yeah, shoes on. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, this spear actually got lodged in his foot. Right. But what's really strange about this, now, again, this might this might be where most people will drop out, and I reckon you might drop out on this one. Right. Um, when the little man retreated, the spear and the wound allegedly vanished completely. Okay. Yeah. And Convenient. <laughs> yes. Now, this is something that has cropped up before, and we spoke about this, I believe we spoke about this in the Bigfoot episode, so I'm going to harken back to that now right, as well. Blimey. Okay. Now, tracks from cryptids and objects left behind, even wounds, disappear after the fact. So right. where someone has seen something, like one of these fairy folk, they've chased them, and they might have dropped... So there was one story where they dropped a handkerchief. It was... It, cut a long story short, they walked into a clearing, they found these... Uh, eight couples of small people dancing. Um, when they were spotted, they decided to run away. Um, but one of them left behind a small white handkerchief. And the kid picked it up, ran home with it. And by the time that they got home, the handkerchief had disappeared. Like it just phased out of existence. Um, now, I kind of want to... Uh, this is how I want, want to talk about it. I want to talk about... When I sort of previously I spoke about abductions and such. Now I'd also want to talk about this from a fairy's point of view. Yeah. So, or from a fairy's aspect at the very least. So fairies have supposedly displayed an alarming habit of kidnapping human beings. That's right. Um, yeah. But in particular, babies. Now we we spoke yeah. about this earlier. We did. And there are many many reports of this. One account listed on the fairiest website details. Uh, the report of a woman who in 1844 gave birth to a baby and sometime later the infant was lying in bed with the mother and the father when the mother awoke to find the baby had gone. She would soon find that it had been taken by the fairy folk and this is what she says in the report. Right. Uttering an exclamation of fear lest the fairies should have taken the child. Or well, sorry, this is what the report said. This isn't what she said. This is what the report the said, report said, said right, from okay. 1844. Um, lest the fairies should have taken the child. She jumped out of the bed and there, sure enough, a number of little sandy things had got the baby at the foot of the bed and were undressing it. They fled away through a hole in the floor, laughing as they shrieked and snatching up her child. On examination, she found that they had laid all the pins head to head as they took them out of the dress. So they've actually she's she's witnessed them undress the child, lay the clothes down, laid the pins down, and have actually taken the, the, the child through the hole in the floor. Bloody hell, all right. So she's actually witnessed her child being taken away, which yeah. is horrific. Pretty horrific. Um yeah. This happened in an old house which stood where the new one now stands on the south side of the vicarage gate. Woman, as she heard tell, had a child changed and one, a poor thing, left in his place. But he is, uh, but she was very kind to it and every morning on getting up she found a small piece of money in her pocket. So she believes so that they were they, paying her for taking the child to take the changeling. 
So you said about this right at the beginning about yeah, the them replacing yeah. the child. And that was with, like a reimbursement for taking the change link. Yeah. Like, yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> she said a poor thing as here's well. A, here's a penny for your troubles. Yeah, there's a penny for your troubles. There you go. Thanks for yeah. having that, but we're going to have yours. Yeah, yeah. But you, can, you can take this instead. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know what to make of that, to be honest. Um, there right. he goes. The, the report goes on to say, my inform, informant firmly believes in their existence and wonders how it is of late years no such things have been seen. Wow. Now, this is what is noted in, in my research is a less than pleasant fairy interactions. And in 2014, a census was conducted by the Fairy Investigation Society. Um, <laughs> I know, I know it sounds silly, Imagine but it's a real wallet. thing. FIF, I need to speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the FI, but uh, yeah. FBI even. Yeah, but so. yeah, the FIS. Um, and they recorded in that particular year 450 encounters. Now, according to the reports, it seems that the encounter, the account encounters are getting a bit more nasty and a bit more sinister. Um, now, a Dr. Simon Young of the International Studies Institute in Florence, Italy, he said, I don't believe in fairies, wings and glitter, but I most certainly believe my witnesses. There is no question that something happened to these people. The question is what? People's ideas of fairies have changed, but... It is odd how many have reported seeing things that resemble centuries old legends. If you go back five or 600 years, fairies make people jump. They see them as fearsome and potentially dangerous beings. This has certainly come back. Fairies seem to have changed. Gone are the friendly ones. Now people are reporting a scarier, creepier underside. Yeah. And so it seems like the fairies are portrayed as like mythical creatures that sort of dwell in the world along with alongside our own. Mm. You know, the idea yeah. of never level land, the fairy yeah. realm, etc. And thousands yeah. of reports from across the world are being made even up as up to the present. So they're not just centuries old stories. They're no. stories that have still been told within the last 10 years. Those, well, exactly, those, yeah. The, the person that, yeah. Could, you know, wrote in and, and told you their story. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, now, there, if what it's showing is that there are two very, very different sides. I mean, we spoke about the seedy and the unseedy side, and it seems like they're coming forth with something. They're, they're, it's almost like they're trying to push forward, and what we're seeing is a far more negative side than, mm. than what Disney might have you. Yeah, yeah. The otherwise yeah exactly so there's, a, yeah. there's a conspiracy there boys and girls <laughs> that's it yeah <laughs> but exactly. so the biggest question here is, is there any truth to it or is it all just born out of fantasy what do you reckon well i think that kind of leads us to getting off the fence doesn't it um it really does with that that question posed alone um oh, what do i think if I was to just base it on this research and nothing more, mm. then then I'd be inclined to believe that it is just legend and fairy tales and you know just something that someone's made up to create a kid's story or to you know to to, yeah. to kind of create something with with that kind of intention. But there's too many other uh, encounters and interactions like what our, you know, sort of listener has had, um, you know, there's things like what we found out when researching for, uh, well, I mean, where do you start? Uh, Bigfoot in particular and mm. how they travel, um, the uh, women in black, um, the black eyed children, um, you know, I guess that then in, in turn, you know, brings into account the men in black as well. Um, I know you and I have mentioned the, the two documentaries, um, you know, the missing 411 and the missing hunted uh, yep. 411 as well. Cracking documentaries. Which are uh, two. Harrowing. Oh, harrowing, harrowing for sure. Really good documentaries. Um, really good. Uh, and so I think when you take all of those things into account, and again, we've mentioned about not believing in coincidences and stuff, and I, th I think there are just too many 
synchronicities, too many familiarities to, that occur um, that make me probably lean more towards the side of the fence that, of believing that they are something. Now, whether they are dwarfs, whether they are six inch, you know, humanoids with, you know, pretty wings that that wear you know little outfits mm. or whatever I, i'm probably not in a position to comment one way or another but i definitely think that they exist in some form i believe that they do come from a realm parallel to ours um and that they can interact and come into our realm um mm. and that yeah a lot of these kind of legends have come from genuine encounters. Um, so, yeah, so I, I would say that I'm probably more on the side of the fence of, of believing, but probably more so because of other things that I've researched or, or that I've watched or... But from previous know, that, episodes. That I, yeah, such, that I've sort yeah. of collated together from, from the accumulation of all the research. Um, mm. Whereas, as I say, if, I was, if you was just to base your opinion on researching That's this one episode alone sort of thing. yeah specifically just sort of fairies and their origins and stuff then i think you could be forgiven for thinking that it probably was all just legend and fairy tales but no i'd say the accumulation of everything that i know and that i've been told and and watched and so forth i i yeah i would i would base my opinion on that more so i guess so yeah more slightly more on the believe in the believe camp i guess okay um, you know so maybe alone Okay, and also so, with the literary evidence as well. So you got people like you know Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, you know you got J. M. Barry, you know all these big. Oh yeah, it's a strong part of literature, a strong part of culture. That's, exactly that's these big evident. sort of figureheads that have put their names to either their own interactions or you know that their own you know kind of stories and, and mm. backgrounds. And I think there's a, enough there to make it a compelling enough uh, uh, creature so, to to believe, I guess. Is, where is it I would benevolent do. or is it malevolent? I would have to say that it's probably more malevolent than, mm. than not, I would say. I think like anything, and, and again, using, um, I hope we don't get sued for this, but again, using Disney as another example, I think <laughs> I think a lot of the benevolent stuff, again, has come from people wanting to try and see the good in something and, you know, trying to always see... The noble cause regardless, isn't it? Yeah, really? exactly. Yeah. And, and I guess try turning something into a good versus evil type thing. Um, but no, I'd say from, yeah, the pre previous research and this research alone, really, I would say that mm. the origin, if it is to be believed, has certainly got a more malevolent, darker undertone um, than than anything else. So yeah, I'd say you know what I I would agree with pretty much everything you've said there, really. And and that's not me being lazy or <laughs> or you know I I genuinely do believe that yeah. what you've said is pretty much words out of my own mouth as well. Really, oh, right, it's, cool. if I'm to take if I'm to take and we didn't discuss like, this prior. Face just, uh, no, 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 we yeah. didn't. <laughs> yeah. We don't ever discuss the getting off the do, fence do we? We beforehand, discuss, unless yeah. it's unless it's completely evident this is exactly nonsense. where yeah. we are with it yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it has yeah. happened once <laughs> happened once it happened once <laughs> so it happened once we'll let so you guess which episodes episode. we've done it once yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah i you know this i would echo your sentiments exactly really i mean if i was to take it based on what research we've done mm. on this i would say that there is a lot of it is it's just stories yeah just stories there's not tells you tell your kids to be good you know if you if you're good you'll get rewarded yeah. for this but if you're bad you'll get punished by this you know mm. you know also things like don't wander off into the forests too far because the yeah. the fairies will take you or yeah. you know so if there's stories to tell your kids yeah like the tooth fairy yeah exactly two fairy they come and take yeah, your the teeth tooth away and they leave you a, pe a penny or a pound or what you know whatever it is yeah inflation's gone um, up inflation's gone up a tad yeah um <laughs> yeah. so yeah so again it's it's taking something with a dark undertone and turning it into a positive for you know for kind of your own benefit which is, which is fine benefit. but I, I think it's not i think it's worthwhile not forgetting about the dark underpinnings of it all. exactly yeah it's, it's worthwhile being aware of it 
because being aware of there could be a potential danger there, you know, and the idea that the thing that, that worries me most about it is, and I I've, did have a little bit of a rant about it before, is about abductions, yes. you know, people that do just go missing and that are either, they're either going missing completely or they're yeah. going missing for a certain amount of time and then yeah. eventually coming back, coming but they're back, yeah. being different. different when they come back. Um, now, this is, I, I, I do believe that when I take into everything that I've previously yeah. uh, researched, not just for the podcast, but also things I've taken an interest in before we started doing the yeah. podcast as well, I think yeah, exactly. there really is, there really is something that we are yet to discover and yet to fully understand yeah, with regards exactly. to this sort of phenomenon. And yeah. I believe that there is the, like what you've said, they're one of the same thing. You know, mm. they are manifesting. There's something that lives alongside us in a, in a realm that we can't at this stage in our uh, being mm. interact with um, on a conscious level. Yeah. We may have previously been able to do it. And that's why mm. I find things like anthropology really, yeah. really interesting because it does dive into these legends of where they come from. It does. And what yeah. We are as human beings, what mm. that actually means. Now, there's definitely a sinister, sinister side to it because when yeah. you said at the beginning about these beings not having a soul, mm. well, what are they trying to get from us? Yeah. Are they, they what is a and, and then that raises the question of what a soul is what you know yeah. th- obviously there's various different religions and and movements from across the world that that call that inner light that inner soul that energy what that light being that we are stardust to yeah. quote some of the new age sort of stuff <laughs> yeah. but it's they're trying to get something from us and i know that kind of makes it sound like we're special yeah. and potentially maybe we are as human possibly, beings, maybe yeah. we are special. Yeah, possibly. Um, but I do believe that there is, it is very, very sinister. And it's, and it's not, it's something that, I know it might sound a bit, bit tinfoil hat wearing and all of that sort of stuff, but I think it should be something that we should at least be wary of. And yeah. specifically with regards to alien abductions. Yeah. You know, because a lot of these fey folk abductions, they, they have a lot of correlating... Oh, they do draw comparisons. Oh, definitely. With, yeah. with these alien abductions. And absolutely, yeah. It is a phenomenon that is being experienced by hundreds of thousands of people across the world. And it's not being taken seriously. No. And or it is I being think, taken seriously, and that's why they're not talking about it. Maybe. Either or. Maybe. You know? And the thing is, it's that idea of that people don't know that they're abduction, they're that they're abductees. Until yeah. they go for like a hypnot like a hypnotic session or something like that, yeah. or they have some sort of regression, like a mm. there's something that just clicks a memory back into place, yeah. and something goes along those sort of lines. Um, but yeah, I think we've most definitely got off the fence there. Yes, and we have, and we're we're on the same side again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we have. We Which have, isn't deliberate. That's, that's, yeah, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and we and we've very much chose to go down different routes with our research as well. You know, very is, different routes. Yeah, and we came to the yeah, same which we conclusion. haven't necessarily been able to do with no. uh, with other episodes because no, not really. But I like this that we can look at different aspects of of it and of still come thing. to the same conclusion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that adds some credit to it. I think. Mm, absolutely yeah so that leads us to uh to the end of this episode to the end of episode 10 it most certainly does it does yes. what, a, what a landmark um i know right 10 episodes 20 weeks we've been doing this dude 20 weeks 10 episodes yeah it's quite a uh 20 weeks it's certainly certainly flown by it's the old adage you know time flies when uh when you're having yeah. fun certainly certainly applies because I've, I've been i could i could still remember sitting and spending many a night watching uh, countless Bigfoot documentaries and <laughs> films yeah. and reading articles. And you know, I still do to this day, but I can just, yeah, remember 
remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> remember it like yesterday. Oh, crack it. Oh, I've, I've loved this. No, I, mean, it's good. I, it's I love good. the fact that we're now in double figures. Absolutely, you know? yeah. And we've, when we, I know we we sort of spoke previously, but we, it looks like we've got, you know, quite possibly the next ten planned. So yes. um, yeah, there's plenty more coming. Plenty more coming, that's for sure. Yeah. And speaking of plenty more coming, absolutely, we've yeah. referenced our next episode already in this ep- in in this episode. We did, and we are going to be looking at the cases that are known as the missing four one one. Absolutely, yes. These strange, very, very odd disappearances. Yeah. That just to give you a little teaser, they people disappear and then their remains are found. So not necessarily just their body remains, but, but not, not items of clothing. Same, but not in the same place. No, not in the same place. No. Sometimes miles away. Yeah. But where they might have found like their hiking boots and yeah. they're neatly placed on top of a log. And yeah. they haven't been out there for years and years and years. Yeah. It's very, there's a lot of high yeah. strangeness surrounding these missing 411 cases. Yeah. And there'll be a certain um, level of, um, there'll have to be a certain level of um, sort of respect, as always, um, shown because these did actually happen. These people did actually disappear and, by all accounts, yeah. are still technically uh, missing people, um, you know, yeah. because bodies and r- remains and stuff haven't necessarily been. Uh, not found, in all cases, no. Not, not in all of them. So, um, yeah, as always, we'll, we'll approach it with, you know, a level of um, sort of respect and we'll be, you know, sort of delicate yeah. with it. But they are, all the stories are, you know, very, very compelling um, in their own right. So, yeah, we'll be, mm. um, yeah, we'll be giving our sort of our review, I guess, and our, our thoughts on on each of those and, um, yeah, and diving into diving into that. Yeah. It's Absolutely. going to be going to be exciting couple of weeks of it is. Uh, yeah of research. research on that one. Yeah, I think I think, well, I, I'm definitely going to be getting out the red string for this one, man. <laughs> yeah, the I'm definitely going to be connecting those dots. I need yeah. a bigger pinboard, man. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I need more string. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, absolutely, yeah. So thank you very much for one. tuning in. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much for tuning in, everyone. Yeah, and uh, yeah. it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. And remember, the truth is out there. Indeed it is.